What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City transfer update. In today's video we have got a development with Kaladu Koulibaly for everyone to look forward to. But before we crack on this video very quickly, make sure you subscribe, press that red button, press the bell and put your push notifications on. Did you know that 58% of you in the last 28 days are not subscribed to my channel? So if you're enjoying the content then make sure you subscribe, press that red button, press the bell and put your push notifications on. We have smashed past 9,000 subscribers and now in the distance 10,000 subscribers that is the aim any help towards that would be much appreciated don't forget also social media links in the description below and popping up on screen if you want to go and search for me and follow me on my twitter and instagram email also in the description below too you're going to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries don't forget also leave your thoughts in the comments below as i'm always interested in what you do have to say and also leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. We're aiming for 500 likes. So any help to us, that would be much appreciated. We're going to crack on with this video. We're going to start off with the outs. Breaks my heart to report this. We've got an update on Scott Carson. Hmm. Now the Guardian, they're reporting that Scott Carson's contract with Manchester City has ended. His loan has ended. Which more than likely now means that he will not be available for the Champions League. That makes me really sad. Now I imagine he's, con uh, he's going to be released by Derby County because his contract is up with Derby County. And I've not heard word that it's been extended. I'm going to keep my eyes and ears peeled with what's happening here but it would make sense for Manchester City to bring Scott Carson back if he has been released on a free contract back to City and use him as our third choice goalkeeper. And He's, he's, a, he's a little bit of a cult hero at Manchester City. But... Um, City might choose to do something else and so it means that if City choose not to sign Scott Carson for next season then we're not going to see him again at Manchester City. Now think about that for just one moment. It hurts. It's very sad. I'm going to be seeing the big man around and I'm hoping that this is not the last that we see of Scott Carson at Manchester City. If it is, I'm going to wish him all the best. But I'm sad. I am. I really am sad. Um, it also means that he never got a chance to make his Manchester City debut. So, yeah, uh, I wanted a clarification on Scott Carson's situation. And we've got it from The Guardian. Hmm. Okay. Right, we're going to move on to the ins. And we've got an update on Sergi Roberto. Now, some um, rumours have been going around about the Barcelona man. Now, Sport in Spain have been reporting that City are having a good look at Roberto. Roberto, should I say, sorry. Uh, but Barcelona are reluctant to sell him. Uh, instead, they want to sell Nelson Semedo. This isn't new to Manchester City. Now, what I will add is that I just don't see Cancelo leaving City this summer. And because of that, um, I don't see us signing Nelson Semedo. So, I'd put that one right to the back burner it's where it belongs it's not going to be happening now with uh, Roberto I'm not too sure if I'm honest he's versatile uh, it would suit Pep uh, being able to play in several different positions right back being one of them I know he can play defensive midfield I don't know if he could play left back I imagine that he would uh, I'm not an expert on Sergi Roberto if I'm honest but I know that he's a versatile player apparently Barcelona not too keen on selling him um, if he did come to Manchester City I imagine he would be um, a squad rotated player, he'd certainly be a squad player. I'm not too sure how much he'd cost, so I don't see City spending big. So I, I, I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm personally, uh, I, I don't see this happening. I'm to be honest, my feeling towards the transfer is all a bit meh. I don't really care if I'm honest. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. I'd like to know your thoughts of that in the comments below. Instead, we're going to move on to a short update on Nathan Ake. Gave full details of that transfer in yesterday's video if you want to go and check that out. Uh, but Metro reporting what I said in yesterday's video has now been reported as uh, going through several media outlets that um, Chelsea will not be taking up their option to match Manchester City's £41 million bid that has been accepted by Bournemouth for Nathan Ake. So plain sailing here for Manchester City to bring in Nathan Ake. As far as I am aware, he is still on holiday. He needs to come back. He needs to do his medical, agree personal terms, sign the contract, and then wait for Manchester City to announce that deal. Uh, and we're in a similar situation with Ferran Torres. I'm not under the impression that he has undergone his medical just yet. Maybe we might get developments on that within the next day and I'll be able to give you that on tomorrow's update. Fingers crossed, but that is the latest that we've got with Nathan Ake at this moment in time. Now, we've got a new name, a young player from Rangers called um, Adir Mabude, probably butchering the name. 
I apologise. Anyway, he's a 16-year-old Scottish striker. He's turned down a professional contract to stay at Ibrox uh, and stay with Rangers. Instead, it's been reported that he is set to sign for Manchester City instead and he'll go into Man City's academy and it will be on a professional deal. So, uh, we'll wait for some kind of official confirmation from a source at the club for this, but uh, exciting times with City being linked with once again another upcoming promising young prospect, this time in the form of of Mabude, or Mabood, I'm not too sure how you say his name, from Rangers, the Scottish striker, 16 years old. So, yeah, looking forward to that, if that does materialise. Now, we've got an update on Dayot Upamecano. Now, this isn't good news if you're a fan of Upamecano and you wanted him to join Manchester City. Yeah, that's more than likely not going to be happening. He has signed a new contract at Red Bull Leipzig, which is going to keep him there until 2023, which has been announced by Red Bull Leipzig. So this is confirmed. Um, that means that him joining Manchester City this summer more than likely now will not be happening. Uh, I know some City fans are hoping that we could use Angelino plus cash to be able to bring in Upa Meccano uh, to Manchester City. Uh, at the end of the day, that isn't going to be happening in terms of Angelino. I've actually got an update on Angelino. I imagine that Leipzig probably waiting to see how they progress in the Champions League, see where they get up to, see how much money they're going to get in revenue from the Champions League, maybe assess it from there. Perhaps they're going to wait to see what some outgoings uh, are going to be happening there. Of course, um, already you've uh, seen Timo Werner leave um, Red Bull Leipzig, but uh, they're still claiming they've not got the cash. So with Upa Meccano not leaving, not too sure where that's going to leave them in terms of money. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. Like I said, Champions League with them progress. It might give them an extra bit of cash where they could maybe sign Angelina. But at this moment in time, uh, with City having so many stalemates, uh, we've got one with Kula Bali, we've got one with Angelino going to Leipzig as well. So we'll wait to see what happens. The summer is long. And speaking of Kaladu Kula Bali, We've got an update on him uh, and Napoli as well. So Napoli announced yesterday that Victor Osman from um, from Lille has signed for them officially. It's been reported as a 50 million euro deal. Um, I will speak about Napoli's president um, in a bit. Uh, but uh, they spent big, which basically means, in my opinion, that a player will more than likely be leaving Napoli for them to be able to fund through this move. Now, Sam Lee has said that City, they want Kaladu Koulibaly. City are, though, reluctant to go into negotiations with Napoli after what happened with Jorginho. And Man City have made it clear to Koulibaly's agent that City simply will not go over £60 million, so we're looking at just over €65 million. Euro. Now, City... Uh, According to Sam Lee anyway, is what he's reporting, uh, that City, if they get word that Napoli are willing to lower their value for Koulibaly, which at the moment stands at between 80 to 90 million euro, should Napoli uh, make it clear that they'll accept less, then City will more than likely be willing to go more than the 60 million pound that City are willing to offer. If I'm honest, I reckon um, City will have to break their transfer record to sign Koulibaly. I reckon somewhere between 65 to 70 million pounds, so we're looking at just short of uh, 80 million euro which is what Napoli uh, maybe might accept City might be willing to go as high as that so maybe like 65 million pound plus 5 to 10 million pounds in add-ons is what City might offer for Koulibaly but City need to have word from Napoli they need to make it clear that that is what's going to happen City of course what happened with Jorginho was Napoli simply just waited for other interest and accepted a bid from another club when they were willing to offer more money but at this moment in time there is no other club interested in Kaladu Koulibaly. They simply cannot afford him. Liverpool would be the only team that maybe would run City close. They're not willing to go even as high as £60 million. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. And so Napoli's president, he came out yesterday and said that he wants €90 million Euro for Koulibaly. He's a very... It's strange. It's really weird. Um, he wants 90 million euro for Koulibaly. Uh, he said he likes having Koulibaly at Napoli. Wants him to stay there. But should they get a bid, basically, he's making it clear that he would sell. And no player is uh, basically going to stay at the club because he wants them to stay. If he's going to get a good amount, he's going to accept that bid. Now, uh, Napoli's president said that they spent nearly 100 million euro on bringing Osman in. That includes the fee, so 50 million euro, including add-ons, agent fees, other costs, as well as wages. So Napoli have spent big. And if Napoli are wanting 
what he's reporting here, 90 million euro for Kalidou Koulibaly, make it clear right now, City will not go that high. And I would not drag my feet if I was City. We'd, we've got limited time this summer in bringing players in. And if Napoli don't bring that price down, simply walk away from the deal would be my advice and have a look at other alternatives. There is a reason why City like going to Spain. They've got release clauses. We don't have to do any of this haggling and negotiations. Uh, we don't have to get involved in it and City, City can walk away. What I will say is I'm, I'm wondering how Napoli can afford Osman should Kalidou Koulibaly find no suitors and stay at Napoli this season, at which case then Napoli maybe would be willing to sell him for a cut price deal. Whether City be patient enough or not, I'm not too sure. They might keep an eye on developments. We've been linked with lots of defenders, Po Torres, Diego Carlos, Melan Scrania. There's lots of options here for Manchester City. And I will say one thing, uh, uh, when we sign Nathan Ake, he won't be the only centre-back that will be joining Manchester City this summer. And if it is, I'm going to be extremely extremely disappointed. We want that top-class centre-back. I regard Koulibaly as that top-class centre-back. If Napoli will accept around £70 million there or thereabouts, I think we should give them the £70 million and sign Koulibaly, get everything signed and sealed. We can get everything sorted. If they're not going to accept £70 million and make it clear that they're not, walk away right now, move on to other targets. We've got limited time this summer. We've got the Champions League coming up next week. Where If we progress against Real Madrid, then Champions League could go on for another couple more weeks. On top of that, Premier League season will start four weeks after City's Champions League campaign uh, ends. We're talk we've got limited time here. So, yeah, uh, City need to be smart, need to be quick in this transfer market. Koulibaly seems like it's going to take time. I would love to know your thoughts of this, though, in the comments below. So there we go. That's been the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up so I know that you enjoyed this video. Aiming for 500 likes, so any help towards that would be much appreciated. Don't forget also, leave your thoughts in the comments below of these transfers. I'm always interested in what you do have to say. Don't forget also, subscribe if you're new around here. Press that red button, press the bell and put your push notifications on. Aiming for 10,000 subscribers. So any help towards that would be much appreciated. My social media links, there in the description below. And popping up on screen if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. Email also in the description below too if you want to go and hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. And I'll be back again tomorrow for another daily Manchester City transfer update. I hope everyone is safe and well. Thank you for watching. I've been JSGC. Peace. Ciao for now.